Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to Dog 101. Today's topic is potty training. As always, disclaimers, I'm not a professional. I uh, just was a dog trainer for a bit. Um, dog groomer, worked at a pet store. So this is just stuff that I picked up along the way. Still recommend doing uh, research outside of me, but I'm still gonna let you know as much as I can uh, about doing some potty training with a dog. Now, presumably, you've gotten a puppy and therefore don't have a, um, you know, because a lot of adult dogs will come pre-potty trained. So I'm going to assume we're talking puppy, but this can also be applied to adult dogs. In fact, there's a lot less steps if you do have an adult dog, unless this is a dog that's been abused, say, uh, being forced into a kennel 23 out of the 24 hours of the day. Then you're going to have uh, a bit of trouble because a dog that has been in those conditions, unfortunately, doesn't have the natural dog instinct to uh, hold it in until they have a place that they can go where they're not going to be uh, stepping in it. Um, dogs are, you know, despite how gross, <laughs> despite the gross habits some dogs can have, they actually are clean by nature and they naturally do not want to go. Uh, one of the reasons why kenneling a dog actually is very effective, especially when it comes to potty training. Um, but yes, that's going to be a completely different subject if you have a dog that has been previously abused in a kennel and no longer has that instinct in them. Um, it's going to be a longer road, and that's definitely one that would require a much longer video than what I'm going to provide for you today. So, um, saying that you do have a puppy, one thing to consider is the fact that um, how old the puppy is is going to determine how much it can hold, uh, how long it can hold, rather. Uh, so, for instance, you know, um, usually you should be getting a dog at eight weeks. That means it's two months old. That means it should be able to hold in its pee for about two hours, you know, on average. Uh, that's longer when um, when they go to sleep. But if you do have one that young, you are going to have to get up in the middle of the night. Just letting you know ahead of time. Um, you know, if you put their water up, you know, a uh, little bit before bed, and uh, you know they should be able to go throughout the whole night, um, pretty pretty early. But you know, yeah, if you have one that young. Just expect that you're going to be losing a lot of sleep, much like having a kid. And so, um, you know, and, and that goes up to a certain point. So, for instance, I'm not saying that if it's a 12-month-old dog, it can hold it for 12 hours. Well, that's just, that's inhumane. Um, the maximum that you should have a dog, uh, you know, kenneled without being able to get outside and go to the bathroom should be an average of four hours, ide you know, ideally no more than five or six. And that's something you definitely want to build up towards. So, again, three-month-old, every three hours, you should be trying to do a bathroom break. Um, so obviously, you know, when you are doing the potty training, um, you know, if you can observe as much as possible, that's going to be very helpful. Uh, you know, so, you know, um, having them in, in a confined area so that they can't sneak off, like, you know, into another room, say, go and then come back and then, you know, nothing happened. Um, you know, again, this is where a kennel will come in handy because you can, and again, it, you know, it, it may be for a different episode. Maybe I'll just do an entire episode on kennel training, but uh, kennels are not uh, prisons. They're actually, you know, a dog safety safe. Uh, they're a great uh, training tool. They're a great way to keep a dog out of trouble. And if you do use a kennel, um, you need to have it be small enough so that they can go in, turn around, and lay down comfortably, but they don't need any extra space than that. Um, it seems like you'd want to give them as much space as possible in the kennel, but that's actually counterintuitive. Um, you want them to, to basically look around and say, I don't have much room. If I do have to go, I'm going to be waiting in it, and therefore, you know, I'm going to hold it in as you know, long as I possibly can. Um, the biggest thing is, is going to be trying to get a good um, routine going. And, you know, a, a dog uh, has a weird sense of time, but they do have a little bit of an innate sense of time in their head. So, like, if you typically go at the same time, you know, uh, every day, then they kind of pick up on that. They kind of get used to the routine. And so, even if it's really pinching, they'll hold it for a little bit longer if they know, okay, any minute now, they're going to come and let, um, let me go to the bathroom. So, um, some of the things to keep in mind. Um, when it does come to the potty training is a lot of the old outdated methods are no longer what we use. So for instance, if they do go and you scold them and you rub their nose in it and you paddle their bottom, um, they're not going to understand why you did that, uh, especially if you find it after the fact. So let's say they go and then you come into the room, uh, even a couple seconds later and you see the puddle, if you go and rub their nose in it, then the only thing you're teaching them is that if you, them, and P are in the same room, then you're going to like to rub their nose in it. You're a weird psycho pet parent that enjoys doing that kind of thing. Um, they're not going to know, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go. Um, 
so yeah, try try not to do try to do as little of uh, you know punishment as possible when you're doing this. You actually want to go the other end. You actually want to reward the good behavior, and either interrupt or ignore the bad behavior. So if you come and there's already a puddle, you can't yell at them. They're not going to know why. Um, you know, even if they do manage to associate that you're angry because they went to the bathroom, I mean, in their mind, they're just like, dude, hydraulic pressure. I mean, what was I supposed to do? So, you know, it's, it's going to be tough because obviously you're going to be a little bit upset. Um, and, and when you do clean it up, make sure that you're using a cleaner that uses a good uh, enzyme uh, killer because even if you, if you clean it with pine salt or, you know, it, it, you know not, not to not pine salt, but, you know, if you, if you clean it with a regular household industrial cleaner, it might smell clean to you. But there's still the enzyme in the urine um, that they can still smell and go back to that same spot. If you notice the dog continually going back to the same spot and you don't have a cleaning product that's specifically for um, dog elimination, then most likely they, there's still a little bit there that they can smell and detect, and that's why they keep going back to the same spot. The other reason might be muscle memory, and we'll get into that. But um, yeah, definitely have one that breaks down the cleaner, and uh, especially when it comes to carpet. You know, even if the if the you know puddles like you know about the that size, you want to do that size cleaning around. Like um, most people don't realize that when a uh, dog pees, the top usually is only gonna be wet where the pee actually hit, but it does spread out and underneath. And you wanna do a wide area around where uh, it got, where the uh, accident happened. Um, now, if there has been an accident, that's actually something you can use to your advantage. So uh, I don't know if you're gonna be using pee pads. Uh, if you do, well, how are they going to know to go on the pee pad? Well, one of the ways you can do that is to have it smell like a bathroom. There are attractant sprays, but what you can even do is if the dog does go, um, whether on the pad or as an accident, what you can do is you can take the pee pad, take the uh, middle of it, and actually do a little dip into the accident. And then that way, uh, when you lay it down, the next time they're sniffing around for a place to go, that already smells like a bathroom. So, um, you know, so something to consider. I'll, I'll have a lot of tips, you know, as we go along, but let's just get to the basics. So. Um, when you do uh, do the bathroom routine, whether it be outside or at the, um, if you are going to do a dog, uh, you know, pee pad or, um, you know, dog litter box, I guess you could call it, then, you know, you want to make sure if you think that it's around that time that they're going to be going, um, you know, you bring them to that area, um, you know, you let them do their thing. And uh, when you start out, you know, have some treats handy and uh, don't, don't use a, um, a code word for it yet. So for instance, don't say go pee uh, just yet. Because um, when you, so this is something you're gonna come across when you're doing dog training. So if uh, if you use a word often enough and it has negative uh, connotations to it. So for instance, if you say go pee and the dog doesn't have to pee and you go go pee and the dog doesn't have to pee and then all they're sensing is your frustration with the word pee, not realizing it has anything to do with the actual like, you know, pee. So um, if you, if you overuse the word and it hasn't been, you know, um, doing successfully, you might actually have to switch the word over entirely. Like you might have to change it to get busy is, is one of my favorite go-tos instead of, you know, go pee or go poop. Um, and, and that's just because like, you know, for instance, I had that happen with my dog. Um, you know, whenever it rained, she would always try and keep it in. So, um, you know, I'd be like, you know, go pee, go pee, go pee. Come on, I know you gotta go pee. Like we're both getting soaked. The dog's, you know, like miserable, I'm miserable. And so pretty soon saying to the dog, go pee, would actually tighten the dog's sphincter. Like it would actually make it harder for the dog to go to the bathroom. I had to switch out and change to go busy, get busy. So um, the first, you know, handful of times the dog does go to the bathroom, just encourage it with the yes and treats and good job, with a good dog, yay. I love when you go here. Um, you know, they're gonna realize, oh, I wanna go to the place that I get treats and praise for going to the bathroom, something that they were gonna do anyway. But if they realize, oh, if I do it in the house, or in a, in a place in the house that I don't, that my pet parent doesn't want me to go, well, then I don't get the love and attention. So they're going to want to, like, it's, they're going to think it's their idea. They're going to want to, you know, have you, like, you know, be there, be present, and, you know, be knowledgeable that it's like, hey, I went in the place that you'd like me to go. So where's my treat? Where's my praise? Where's my love? Um, and, uh, that, you know, that, that's the main reason why you don't want to do the, uh, you know, rubbing the nose in it, say, or scolding or spanking when they do it in a place that you don't want them to do it. And the reason for that is because you're not going to teach them, oh, go go to the place where you get praised. They're going to realize, okay, if I have to go and I'm in the house where you don't want me to go, then I'm going to find a place because, you know, they're not dumb. Like the reason why they look guilty, if you come into the room and they have what looks like a quote unquote guilty look, uh, you know, because they went to the bathroom. Well, that's not because 
you know, they say they, you know, they know that they did bad. They just have started to put together that when you, me, and P are all in the same room, bad things are going to happen. So all you're going to teach them to do is to eliminate discreetly. They're going to try and find places that you don't normally find it. Like for instance, if they're uh, if the couch is pushed away from the wall a little bit and they're skinny enough to, you know, go behind it, they'll go pee behind the couch. You'll never discover it until it gets, you know, to be summertime and it gets humid out. And you're like, why does it smell like pee in here? Every time it gets humid out, it smells like pee in here. And I can't figure out why. It's because they found a place to just, you know, eliminate that you can't find it. So you want them to, you know, not be um, scared, you know, to go in an obvious place. It'll be easier to clean up. It'll be easier to keep track of what's going on. Um, so, you know, let's say that you do have an eight week old puppy. All right. So, um, you know, you have them, um, and <clears throat> you think it's right around the time that they need to go. So you take them out and they don't go. That's going to be the most common thing that happens. They got, now they're outside. They want to sniff, they want to smell, they want to like, you know, explore. And so you got to keep them on track. So one thing that you don't want to do, uh, that typically people will do is just like, you know, the dog will sniff around in an area and you're like, no, you don't want to go there. Okay, well, we'll go to the next spot. And then, nope, you don't want to go there. Okay, we'll go to the next spot. And then eventually the dog does go and then you bring them inside. And that's the opposite of what you want to do. You actually want to do, um, you want to go to a, a regular designated potty place. So ideally away from gardens, flowers, you know, places that their pee, you know, like the, the good lawn in the front yard, you know, like the places that the pee is going to kill any, you know, grass or foliage. Uh, you know, you want to get it to um, a, a place where it's okay for them to, to eliminate and it's not going to damage anything in your lawn. And uh, you just stand there and you be boring. And, uh, you know, depending on your amount of patience, you know, you're, you're going to have to wait a little bit. If they do eventually go, then like I said, you know, yay, celebrate it, give them a treat. And now you, you can go back inside, but, you know, go the long way around, you know, like, like, give them a chance to do, you know, don't go immediately beeline back for the uh, house because they're going to realize, oh, if I hold it in longer, then I get to stay outside longer. That's where they want to be is outside. So you, you know, let them go and now they can explore the yard a little bit and then you go back inside the house. It's, it's like a secondary reward for going where you wanted them to go. Um, so let's say that they don't go, which is going to be more likely the case. Well, what you do is you bring them inside. Um, you know, wait 15 minutes to a half hour, and then you try again. So again, when you're doing potty training, you're going to need to have a lot of hands-on time with them. So it's not a bad idea if you have one really young that when you first get them, that you, um, you know, have some time off. And the only problem with that is also you um, you don't want to get them used to you being there 24-7, and then all of a sudden after your two weeks is up, then you're no longer there. They're going to think they did something wrong. So even though you want to spend a lot of time with your puppy, pardon the... I have GERD, so you're going to hear burps in the podcast. I apologize. Um, so, you know, uh, spend some time away, like, you know, have them in a kennel or in the designated uh, play area. And, you know, like, you know, leave. Leave leave the house, you know, for like an hour or so. You know, like, you know, go, go do some yard work outside or whatever. Like, get let, let them get used to you not being there. Um, if you are planning on spending a good chunk of time when you first get them with them. Because, again, they're all about routine. If for two weeks you're there 24-7 and then all of a sudden you have to go back to work, that they're not going to know why they're going to think it's something that they did. Um, you know, you're going to cause, uh, you know, a separation anxiety, disassociative, you know, um, you know, behaviors, destructive behaviors, I mean, and, um, you know, and the like. So just keep that in mind. But ideally, you know, in this situation, if you have a, a you know, designated area or a pen, in this case, I'm going to recommend the kennel. So that's why I'm going to use the kennel as an example. So you don't have to follow it to the letter, but so you go outside, they don't go, you bring them back inside, you put them in the kennel. Uh, let them, you know, sit it out for about 15, 30 minutes, and then you try again. And then when they finally do go, again, praise, treats, uh, you know, quick walk around. And now they have a little bit more free reign of playing because you know that their they're, they're gas tank's on empty right now. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit for it to fill back up. So you're pretty safe from them eliminating again right away. Um, and also keep in mind, if this is your first time with a puppy, they're not always going to give you the snuff, 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 three spins, and then squat. You know, um, a, a lot of puppies will just be like, oh, I feel a little pinch and just immediately squat down with no warning whatsoever. So be on the lookout for that. Um, the sniffing for a good place is something, you know, that they adapt a little bit later on in the in the game. And so, um, you know, you're going to have to be watching them like a hawk. Now, if you catch them mid squat, this is the time you actually can do something. So this is when you can distract them. You can be like, ah, 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 you know. 
um, go run over, grab them. You know, hopefully you can't cut them off midstream because they're just so shocked about you rushing towards them. And then you bring them outside. And then if you're just like, you know, soothing and, you know, they calm down and they're, you know, sphincter, you know, and clenches. And then they go outside, you know, for the rest of the pee. Then you can reward them, you know, do the quick, you know, walk around, come back in and then clean up the, uh, the mess. Um, and again, if you come around the corner and it's already there, just clean it up. You know, there's nothing much you can do now. It's tough. It, you know, it sucks, but that that's kind of how it is. And, um, you know, uh, so um, after a handful of times that they go outside, then you can start after the elimination, start going, you know, yes, good pee. That was a good pee you did. That's a good job, good pee. You know, um, again, we're not doing it beforehand. We're not going to try and um, get them to activate by saying the command because, again, we're trying to establish that this is a good positive thing and um, we don't want any negative stuff associated with it at first. So, again, like when you take them outside and they do go, you know, first couple of times just, just you know, praise them. Uh, the next couple of times you can actually start using the word. And then if you and the dog have gotten to a pretty good understanding and you're pretty much on the same page, um, you might be able to start saying it just before they go. Like they were already like sniff, 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 pee. If you go sniff, sniff, and you go go pee, sniff, pee. Like if if you do it just before they were going to anyway, again, you know, it, it, it seems, you know, like they were doing it on command. You knew that they were going to do it anyway, but they start to kind of get the idea where it's like, and this is, again, going to be really helpful in times that they don't want to. If they are pansies about the snow or about, um, you know, rain outside, uh, they still need to go, but, you know, they, they might not enjoy the conditions as much, and so you're going to have to be able to, you know, kind of remind them with the trigger word later on. And, you know, again, you know, don't 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 get too much stress going on when it happens because uh, you can still ruin the word, you know, later on down the road. And it, it, it really is easier just to get a new phrase than it is to, um, you know, try and heal and fix the word that you already ruined. So just keep that in mind as well. So, um... Yeah, so, you know, if you're doing the kennel training, so, you know, now now that they've gone, um, they have uh, freedom to kind of, you know, play around, sniff around corners, do that kind of stuff. When it starts getting close to the time that you're that they might need to go again, um, you know, it, it's it seems cruel to a human because, you know, you think cage, you think, you know, prison, you think, you know, bad stuff. But uh, honestly, you know, at this point, you know, dogs take multiple, you know, when they're that young, they take multiple naps a day. Um, I mean, even a wolf pack, you know, sleeps, I think, like, 18 hours in a day, you know what I mean? Like, especially if they've just, you know, like, been able to have a fresh kill, like, you know, dog dogs aren't necessarily cats when they take up multiple cat naps, but they definitely do sleep quite a bit. They uh, So, you know, putting them in the kennel, just to have some, you know, wind down time and to, you know, make sure that they're not going to pee when you're not paying attention. So you can do, you know, do a load of laundry, do a couple dishes while they're, you know, maintained. Again, if you have the size of the kennel right, ideally, they should be, you know, comfortable with just, you know, like, laying down, catching some Z's, you know, um, careful about what you put in there because, uh, you know, there's still going to be incidents that you might still have to clean it. Um, for instance, uh, we got our dog when she was six months old. She was uh, very, you know, well potty trained. And we still had an incident uh, every week uh, on every, on a Friday, which was frustrating because Friday was the day that she was in the kennel the least amount of time. It was, it was really weird. Um, but this is something you're going to have to deal with is muscle memory. So if uh, the dog has eliminated in a place that they're not supposed to. Um, expect them to eliminate, even if you clean it with a good cleaner and it's not gonna be, you know, smelling like that to them. Um, muscle memory is just like, well, this is where I went last time, so this must be the where the bathroom is. So if you do have a relapse, just expect it. I mean, with dog training, it feels like it's two steps forward, one step back. Just, you know, continue to make progress. Don't worry about the setbacks, but, um, you know, watch them, you know, for a bit after they have an accident because they're probably going to try and recreate that accident multiple times until you've had at least a good handful of times, you know, in the pro appropriate place and then they kind of, you know, re-switch back on and then they're just like, oh, yeah, 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 this is where we go. That, I remember that from the previous couple of times that I've gone. Um, and uh, also, so, you know, the, 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 time, the timing for your praise and the timing for the treat are crucial because um, a lot of people don't realize just how short of a, of a, associative memory that dogs have and what I mean by that is that if um, you know you, the reason why you can't uh, correct them if you if you stumble across a, a, a pee puddle is because if that happened more than five seconds ago that that's that's in the distant past they're not gonna associate that that's what you're you know angry at them about um, you know so if, if they go outside then you go 
you know, good job, and then you bring them inside, and then you give them a treat inside, because that's where you keep the treat jar, they're not going to get it. They're going to they're gonna think they get a treat from going inside. Like, so, so you understand, like, you know, you need to have those treats on the ready. Excuse me. Might seem a little awkward, but I mean, you can even be feeding the dog the treats as they're in the mid-squat, you know, like going poop or whatever. Um, it, you know, it seems a little awkward, but like they can multitask. They can, you know, get them as, as they're going. And I mean, that's probably one of the best times to give it to them because there's no doubt about why they're getting treated. I mean, if they have some poop coming out of them as they have treats going into them, they're like, well, clearly these two things are associated. Whereas if, you know, you wait too long or if you even wait till you get inside for them to get the treat, they're going to think the treat had nothing to do with the bathroom time. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, and yeah, like I said, if you get them as a puppy, then you can start extending the times of them going, you know, like three months, now you can wait three hours, you know, four months, now you can wait four hours. And, uh, just make sure that, um, when you do the switch, that you watch them extra careful every time that you do the switch and that you also, um, you know, make, make that standard for a while. Cause again, they're all about routine. So I don't want you to start waiting, um, you know, three hours, 15 minutes when they're three months and a week old, and then three hours, 30 minutes when they're three and a half months, you know what I mean? Like, so establish that for a good bit. So I usually recommend just doing it per month. You know, each month you can switch it up where they can go a little bit longer. Um, and and that might be something that they even told you about. Like once you start to really figure each other out, I mean, if, if you wait every three hours, the dog's getting close to four months, and you know, on the third hour mark, they don't go. And then you take them out again, you know, half an hour to an hour later, and then they do go, well, all right, the dog's telling you, I can hold it longer. Like, let's just get back to doing the, you know, the doggy stuff. Then, yeah, you know, and some dogs are, are going to be at different speeds. Again, that's why I'm not giving you a specific um, age where you can, they can usually sleep for eight hours overnight. Um, and it does seem like you're depriving them of essentials. So, I mean, it sounds like animal cruelty, but it's not. Um, when I say that, you know, put their water up before, you know, bedtime so that they don't piss themselves overnight... I'm not talking about like, you know, oh, it's six o'clock, we're going to go to bed at 10. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, you know, probably like maybe a good hour before it's time for them to go to bed, you can put their water up. And again, this is something you might not even have to do later on. Once they get the routine going, they know they're going to be going to bed, you know, roughly around 10 o'clock. Um, you know, most dogs are smart about that. And they'll just, uh, you know, make sure that they for sure go, you know, when you take them out for their last, uh, you know, bathroom run. So... You know, you don't have to worry about regulating that as much. But when they are this young, you know, they're, they're basically going to have the teeniest of stomachs. So they're going to always be hungry, always be thirsty, um, you know, always be peeing and always be pooping. You know, they have, they have you know, teeny bladder that they have very little control over. They have, you know, uh, poo that if you get them younger than you should, you might actually have to help them poo by using like, you know, a, uh, a warm, wet, you know, like a washcloth to simulate, you know, like the mom, you know, simulating that. Uh, so... You know, things to think about, like, I, I, I don't want to give too much advice for people that are getting uh, pets too young because I don't want to encourage that, but it's still something you should probably know about, and that's one little tip, is doing the, you know, warm cloth on the uh, butt. If you think that they definitely have to go, but they seem to be having trouble, you know, getting it out, um, that can help stimulate it because it, re you know, resembles the, you know, mom. Um, it's kind of gross, but, you know, look in that area to encourage that to happen. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, that's kind of the basics, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll mention stuff as it goes along, but I can get into a little bit more of the specifics. So, um, you know, when it comes to uh, keeping them in a confined area, you know, like I said, I, I do appreciate the uh, the kennel, the, um, you know, penning off a certain area, you know, in like, you know, a hardwood floor area, you know, isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, it might be weird if that's only for when they're doing the potty training and then they actually have a different area that they can play in and uh, go to bed at night. So kind of be thinking about future plans about, you know, like how much of a dramatic switch is this going to be? Um, you know, so like if, if they've been potty trained on uh, pee pads or in a, um, a, a litter tray, which little small dogs actually can. It's not just a cat thing. Like small dogs actually can be trained on a litter tray and a pee pad and stuff. Um, you know, say that you have like a tiny dog, third floor apartment. It's not really, you know, feasible to be going up and down all the time. You know, that's something that you can do, but, you know, um, just plan ahead if, like, you know, like, well, if this isn't your permanent domicile and you plan on going someplace else, they might then be able to have an area that they can go out. Uh, also, you know, think about if you have, a, you know, a setup where it's like the dog can go out at any time and, and, you know, like, so they have a doggy door and they're going in and out all day long. Well, you know, that 
that's great that they have that freedom and you know hopefully you're doing it safely where they you know are, are going out of the doggy door into a fenced in area and stuff but I mean, what happens when you do a road trip, you know, with them? Or, you know, what happens if you, you know, take them literally anywhere but the house? I mean, um, you got to be thinking long term where uh, if a dog doesn't have bladder control, like if they never had to learn bladder control because they've literally always had access to outside. So anytime they feel a pinch, they're like, oh, time to go. And they don't have any chance to hold it. So, again, that's why I feel like, you know, getting used to being in a kennel when you're gone, it's, it's you know, safe for, for the, the house. And also it's, it's good for them to be able to, you know, work on body control. Um, yeah, I, I know plenty of adult dogs that, you know, have, have almost zero control. They go in the, they, they used to go in the store when I worked at the store all the time because they, they really didn't have, you know, they, they had the instincts to always mark everything. And they also never really had any discipline with trying to, you know, keep it in for a certain amount of time. So something to keep, uh, keep in mind. Um, so real quick, one thing I want to talk about, uh, that I, I enjoy is the, um, the, the bell situation. So... You may or may not have heard of it, but um, when you, you know, it, it's it's nice if you kind of figure out what your dog's uh, bathroom routine is going to be anyway, but, um, you know, sometimes they might have drank a little bit more water than usual. I mean, is your bathroom routine the same every single time? If it is, well, good for you. I envy you. But, it, you know, in my case, it's not. It, it usually takes, um, you know, certain parameters in order to make sure that, uh, you know, I can eliminate before I go to work in the morning, let's say. So, you know, for Doug, it's going to change up a little bit. So one great technique that you can uh, use is uh, hanging bells in the door. They sell them at any uh, pet store, but you can also just, you know, go to any, you know, like Christmas tree shop or whatever, just, you know, grab some bells for a couple cents and, you know, hang them off the doorknob anyway. Uh, the idea being that um, if they need to go, they can go over to the door, ring the bells, alert your attention. Uh, you let them out, they go to the bathroom, they get praised, they get treats and stuff. So the way to train them on it, usually if you're getting them at a pet store, it'll come with an instructional DVD or a QR code that you can scan with your phone and then see a video pop up. Um, but the general idea is that first couple of times you ring the bell before you open up the door to go outside. Ring the bell, open up the door to go outside. Then you grab some treats and then you kind of try and get to lure their nose over to ring the bell themselves and then you go outside. And then once you think they're kind of starting to get the idea, you can't go out that door until they ring the bells. And so if they really have to go and they're dancing, they're like, you know, uh, come on, you know, hydraulic pressure's happening. Um, you know, they might like figure it out and, you know, ring the bell themselves. And then pretty soon um, you have a dog that rings the bell to go outside. And now, you know, they can tell you. And what's great about that is that, you know, they're still getting, they, they, this is so that, you know, they, they realize, okay, I go inside, I get no treats, I get no love. I go outside, I get treats and praise for something that was going to happen anyway. So they want to already go outside to go to the bathroom. So um, once they realize that that's the doorbell to get go outside, you know, they'll happily do it. Only downside to this training, and again, once you get to know the dog's schedule, you will probably know when this is happening, but the dog might ring the bells in order to go outside when they didn't have to go. It was, a, it was them trying to train you, you know, they were trying to trick you and do a little false alarm kind of thing. Well... Honestly, I still feel like that's better than having to clean up a mess inside. But also, once you start to know their routine, you you you'll probably be able to figure out when they're uh, BSing you a little bit, and so you can just be like, ah, uh -uh, you don't you don't get to go out, you know. Um, oh, by the way, so re real quick, back to you know, like if they do go and you catch them, um, you know, the reason why I was just like you know saying clapping and going ah uh ah, -uh, um, if 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 you literally like you know like you know. And this is something that I get, I get into, you know, like when I talk about my training, but there's a huge difference between no and uh-uh. So a no is you being alpha and saying, don't do this thing. Now, to a dog that has a full bladder, I beg your pardon, are you telling me that I can't pee? Well, I'll explode eventually. So, you know, obviously you don't understand how uh, physiology works, so I'm just going to ignore you. So when you do uh-uhs, it's less aggressive. It's just more of a reminder where it's just like, oh, remember, we have a set of rules in place. So, um, you know, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but if you do have a puppy, um, don't give it the grace period that you instinctively want to do. So when you do get a puppy, it seems like everybody always wants to do this where they're just like, well, I'll give them, you know, a week to get adjusted to the sights and smells and sounds of the new house. And then I'll start enforcing the rules. And you actually want to already have the rules in, in your head before you even think about getting the dog, first of all, um, and then start enforcing them starting day one. And uh, the reason for that is, again, dogs, you know, like routine, they like a schedule, but they also, um, if you coddle them for the first week and then you get into the rules, they're going to think that something changed. They're going to think that there was a shift, that they did something wrong. And they're not going to understand, well, 
you know, for, for a while, you know, I was able to just like, you know, s you know, sleep in the bed, jump up on people. And now you're going to suddenly start, you know, teaching me not to jump up, you know, not to um, go wherever I please. You know what I mean? Like, so you definitely want to establish the rules from day one um, and, and stick with them so that they know this isn't a punishment. This is literally how this pack works, you know? So just, just keep that in mind that, um, you know, a lot of stuff that is going to come naturally to your head that you would want to enforce on a dog, it's actually coming from a place of us being primates, them being canines, and it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to make sense in their head. So try and think like a dog. Uh, I get into a lot in a lot of my other videos, but that's, that's a big one is that, you know, what would make sense to a human, it's not going to make sense to a dog. So um, start, start whatever, you know, routine that you have planned right away and stick to it. And honestly, if you're still having issues like, you know, a week or two into it, then maybe you want to adjust how you're approaching it. You know, like try it from a different angle, see if that works instead. But for at least the first week or so, um, you know, stick to your plan so that that way they have consistency because there's also going to be this thing where they're going to test you. Um, it's, it's naturally built into them. It's like, you know, if, uh, if the rules aren't consistently reinforced, well, then they're going to try and figure out a way to get around it. So... You need to be as consistent as possible, so, you know, that's something where, um, oh, well, that didn't work, they had an accident on the rug. Oh, well, that didn't work, they had an accident on the rug. Well, don't give up right now. You know, um, I, th there's this very famous uh, illustration of, um, you know, a guy with a, with a pickaxe that he's, he, you know, he's bored a tunnel um, in the dirt, and then he's just kind of given up, and he's gone the other direction, and, like, literally an inch from where he last did his pick, there was, like, a whole bunch of diamonds in the, you know, in the ground so it's just kind of like a way of saying you know it's just like just you know don't give up just give it a little bit more and then you know if you're absolutely certain that this is not if if, it, if anything if it's just getting worse and worse then yes you can definitely switch up tactics don't keep on you know trying something that isn't uh, effective but stick it out for at least the first week and then if not go back try something new um that's Mostly what I got, and I'm sure I left out a bunch of stuff, but, you know, that should be at least a good jumping off point. And then, uh, like I said, do some research in other places. They might come up with something that I didn't mention or, you know, uh, you know, have something that I never even heard of because, you know, some of my techniques are uh, a few years old. So maybe there's a brand new one where it's just like, oh, that's even better. And, uh, yeah, if you find something that I uh, either got wrong or that, you know, I, I definitely neglected to mention, please mention it in the comments. Um, this is... You know, actually the second time that I put up the video because my buddy pointed out uh, initially that I, I talked a lot about potty training without actually getting into how to potty train on my previous video. So uh, it was frustrating to listen to. He went through a whole half hour of me not telling you how to potty train a dog. So I, you know, took it down. I tried to redo it this way so that I definitely had a little bit more instruction on the actual potty training itself. But, you know, it's a work in progress. So please let me know in the comments. Um... You know, if uh, there's anything else that I should add to the next iteration of this video, and uh, good luck. Potty training is, you know, it's it's one where you, you go to work and you talk to other people that don't have dogs about the uh, hardships, and it's unsympathetic. So I've been there. I sympathize with you. In fact, even though I know how to do potty train a dog very well, um, I'm going to adopt an adult from now on, <laughs> that, you know, just because it's like I don't have to go through that all over again. So uh, if you're going through it right now, you know, you, you, you have people that will want to help and uh, definitely reach out, you know, whether it be through watching videos or, you know, reading uh, forums or, you know, any of that stuff. So, um, you know, good luck to you.